Well, right, I'm uh, Darren Proctor, the, the founder of the Facebook uh, Stand Up and Brutal Social uh, Network site. The reason that the foundation of the group came about, there was an, an obvious fire in the belly of the people of, of Brutal who were angry in relation to the, the, welfare, the welfare reforms, the bedroom tax, the introduction of the universal credit and the political circus that is known as Westminster um, where the people of Bootle and Sefton are not getting a say in what's going on we're being dictated to and we're being thrown out there basically as peasants um, Now the fact of the matter is is that you know Bootle and Sefton primarily have been left untouched for a number of years it hasn't been a hotbed of activity. There was a number of people who were out giving petitions, etc., et in the, the, the latter end of 2012. So we created the group early 2013 with a view of setting up a network of people to get out there amongst the people, the people who would affect and show what's going on. Basically, it's only because me, me, me and my girlfriend who's behind there, it was just a, I moved into a two bedroom flat in August last year. And now I'm losing, me and her now, we're move, losing 14 pounds a week. I can't afford that. I'm, they say today I'm on a good day, I'm on ESA. My girlfriend's just been putting me claim. It's the money that we're both getting is being reduced anyway. And we just can't seem to afford it. So, it's just, why give? A five percent, a five pence tax cut to the rich, giving them extra, extra thousands of pounds each year. When the people down below are getting all the cuts, when it's their problem in the first place. We'll see. Why? Hi, I'm Juliet from Stand Up in Bootle. We're part of the Greater Merseyside anti-bedroom tax movement, but that's not just about the bedroom tax. The bedroom tax across the UK is one of the first attacks on the working class. This movement will grow. We already have people of working age claiming benefits, having to pay towards their council tax. Across Merseyside it varies from something like 8% to 20%. To some places in the country it's as much as 25%. We also have a tax on job seekers who are being sanctioned on a daily basis. Sanctioned so they do not receive their benefits. Then what do they do? They have to go about to local organisations, scrounging food, etc. We are here today to show strength in numbers, to show not just Sefton but the people across the country there is a movement against this government. And it's not just this government, at the moment we've got Tory and Lib Dams in, but it would be the same whether it was Labour. Labour started a lot of this welfare reform. Labour started the privatisation of the health service, the privatisation of our schools, and this government is just continuing it. Across Europe there are attacks on working people. In Greece you can already see there are whole families living off a pensioner's income. There are people starving. There are people having, starting to grow their own food. There are people having to rely on handouts to live every day. And that's what's going to happen here. It's began to happen here already. So here in Stand Up in Bootle we've started with the bedroom tax. People cannot afford to pay this, people will pay what they can, but in the end they cannot pay this. This will land up in court. There are already judicial reviews, 10 I believe, on all aspects of the bedroom tax. Some about the right to a family life, particularly for fathers who are separated, who have their children staying. Some around disability, where you cannot share a room with your partner. There are a whole range of issues here. Are we defending every job? Yes! Are we defending every benefit? Yes! Okay, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Okay, we must be round of applause now. Let's raise a bit. These are the people that I'm talking to here about. These people in these offices, they're not even trained medical officers, are trying to get people, this lady over there, to go for interviews, to get back to work. They don't quite well, they can't back to work. They sent one, woman, uh, one fella 
done a medical on him. Seven days later, he died. That's how fit he was to go to work. These people have got to be stopped what they're doing. Uh, the government's got to have a look and see what they're doing. It's all about welfare rights and all the rest of it. These people have welfare rights. They're in chairs and told to what to do. There's where the rights should be, mate. Thank you. We had our first demonstration after only six weeks. We had 1,200 people on the streets of Merseyside. We're bringing the community and the trade unions together. PCS have recently been on strike in Bootle. Stand Up in Bootle was there to, to support them. We've had an ATOS demonstration. Stand Up in Bootle was there to support them. And that's the, that's the plan of attack that we're taking. You know, Labour has sat on its sat on its um, hands to say the least. It's not representing us in Parliament. It's not representing us locally. Labour's no longer represents the working class. It no longer represents um, the trade union movement. I've been battered by the Tories once in the 70s when I was a young lad made redundant. And now they're back for round soon, so am I. And I'm not paying it, no chance. But I want more tax. I think you should get taxed on your toilets. You've got two toilets, let's have toilet tax. Let's tax the air. Let's tax everything. That's why I'm here today. Let's put these in the place. We pay the wages, and this isn't what we voted for. This isn't what we want. So let's get them out of there as soon as possible. The amount of people who have said to me over the last couple of months that bedroom tax doesn't affect them. Well it does. It's going to affect everybody. It's going to affect everybody. Um, when the crime rate goes up, when there's more robberies, when there's more thefts, and the prices of the food will go up to cover this, every small business will suffer because people have got less money in their pockets. Um, People who are employed in small businesses may find the job, job losses which will put us in more trouble. So if you think you're not going to be affected by bedroom tax, think again because ultimately everybody will be affected by it. What we're beginning here is the foundations of a fight back that is growing weekly and people are beginning to see that we don't have to um, go along uh, at, with, with what Labour doesn't say or what the Tories do say. There is an opinion out there that we can fight back and that's what we're beginning to do. Hi, yeah, I'm Paula from Stands Up in Bootle. Yeah! I would just like to thank you all for coming along today and taking the time out to get down here. Well done. <laughs> right, I'm no David Cameron or Ed Miliband, I'm just a normal hard working girl. I'm a taxi driver and I have been for a number of years. I don't need no one to write me a speech, I've done it all myself. I'm a taxi driver and I have been for a number of years. And driving around this city for the last couple of years, I've seen the poverty and the struggle that people are going through in this city. The other day we had a woman approach us who has six children currently in foster care. Slowly by slowly as things improve in her life, those children are coming back to her. What she's to say to the family court, I haven't got a house for my children now because of the bedroom tax. So we've advised her, you can't move, you need your three bedroom house for when eventually your six children return to you. So you can see that the bedroom tax is affecting everyone and pensioners don't be fooled. The government's um, saying at the moment that pensioners are not affected by the welfare reforms and we know why they're saying that. Well, they're saying that because they believe that you vote for them, you pensioners vote for them, but as we know you don't all vote for them and you are affected. People on the universal credit pilots, mixed age pensioners, one below pensioner age and one above, they are affected by the bedroom tax. That's why three of those pilots have been cancelled.
song Georgia has just beautifully sang, I want to speak and I want to shout, well that's why I'm here today. In truth, we have all become fearful and I and others are now finally finding our voices. It is a case of having to because of the damage being done to our town pool and the country in general. Now we all know who created the mess, the greedy bankers and the politicians, yet we now know who is paying for it, the working class, the unemployed and the disabled. <laughs> See, we are working class, and the clue is in the title. We have to work for our money. But how can you work if there is no work? The unions are tied. We're all scared if we have got a job of losing it. We're petrified. The right wing media portrays the working class as the problem, but we're not the problem. We're the one that keeps this country going. We're now paying a price for the banks lending money that they didn't have for our politicians supporting us in illegal wars. Well, people are starting to educate themselves. People are starting to educate themselves now, rejecting the likes of BBC News, Sky News, rags like the Daily Mail and the Sun. They're getting rid of them, they're educating themselves, they're actually even making their own media through the likes of YouTube and social networking sites such as Facebook. Hopefully, hopefully the next generation will start to have a bigger say in politics and maybe completely redraw the political system because it needs to be done. <laughs> the old media has a lot to answer for. That is why you will probably only see this on YouTube or on the internet. We have to create our own media. As in the Emily Sandy song, we have to do that to get our version of events across. At the moment, there is no left. New Labour never ever stood for the working class. You only have to watch the news and watch the House of Commons. We've got middle class politics, politicians debating on our behalf. Is it any wonder that the working class are downsodden? We've got no one there representing us. <laughs> Just because they've got red ties on, they're supposed to represent us. They don't. Look at Ed Miliband, he's a millionaire, for God's sake, and we're supposed to believe he's working class. He's not. We've got to get our people in there now. We've got to start fighting for us. We're the town sodden ones in this society. <laughs> that is why most of us don't vote. There's no one to vote for. There's no alternative. Tony Blair said we are all middle class. Well, I've got news for you, Tony Blair. We're not all middle class. I'm working class. All of these people here are working class. We're all working class and proud. We don't want to be middle class. We want to be working class. <laughs> We don't ask for much of the working classes, we, all we ask for is a decent house, a good NHS, schools to educate your children properly, jobs with rights, jobs with all of these. We're getting it all took away from us because of these greedy bankers and these corrupt politicians. I just want to look forward to a state pension, something that my mum and dad took for granted in the 20th century. This is now the 21st and we can't look forward to that. Is it, it should be getting better, not worse. Give it to them, Give it to them. What Tony Blair meant was all the political parties are middle class. Because the Lib Dems, UKIP, Labour and Conservatives are all middle class politicians. There's no working class in the House of Commons. They don't want us in there because we might change the world. You don't only have to think back to school. Did he teach you about politics in school? They don't want you to know because we might change the country. We might get rid of them. Think back to Matt, how many years did you spend doing algebra and logarithms and all that crap, fractions? Did you ever use it? Why didn't he teach you the basic necessities? What mortgage rates are, what interest rates are, what loans are? Because you're easy as work when you're ignorant. Now, I'm a blue, but Hillsborough shows you what happens when Scousers take on the establishment. Yeah. We all knew that fateful day in April, all them years ago, that them 96 people never, never had anything to do with the debt. It was the police that covered it all up. Yeah. <laughs> Anne Williams' funeral on Monday, she fought for truth, she fought for justice. She got the truth out that we all knew for years in Liverpool. We knew that Liverpool fans weren't to blame. Cobbler with Thatcher two weeks earlier, who was quite culpable in telling the lies about the Liverpool people, saying it was the Scousers because she can't stand us, because they hate us because we fight back. Yeah. Thatcher, what does she do for the country? She got a £10 million stake funeral. 
Then in times of austerity, he cuts it in his, and she gets 10 million spent on it. I I'll tell you what she's she done. She sold the gas, the lecky, the railways, the lots of foreign companies. Yeah. But for the country, Ricky Tomlinson, another scout who would say, my ass. Yeah. What we're going to do is take the, take the fight um, and represent the people of Bootle, the, the people of Sefton. And if that means standing people as councillors, we will do that. Because what we believe in is representing the people, not collecting a paycheck at the end of the day and just sitting there like a nodding dog. So please take the time to get involved in Stands Up and Bootle. Doesn't matter where about in the country or the world you're from. This attack happens in your city, in your country, and we need to build this movement. Thank you very much for taking the time.